welcome. Okay, so we're learning Tanya of today. Okay. So Tanya of today is explaining certain things that we can understand about Hashem and godliness, um, higher awarenesses, and the difference between Moshe Rabbeinu, uh, visualizations, and ability to perceive things in a more experiential way, um, and Tzadikim, holy people like the Arizal and the Rosh Hashanah Baruch who taught us and gave us the Holy Zohar and the writings of the Arizal, writings of Kabbalah, that their teachings were not so much from a place where they could uh, see it like as a prophecy, they knew it more intellectually. Okay, so therefore, the teachings of the rabbis, like the Arizal and Rosh Hashanah Baruch were, um, they were able to go all over different levels of godliness <laughs> and understand high, you know, the whole map, you know, get the whole visual picture, but it wasn't necessarily on this level of sight or visualization or experience that Moshe Rabbeinu had in prophecy. Okay, so, um, okay. So, okay, so the lower levels- Can of I say something? Yes, yes. That's interesting because, like, how it, 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 we are trying to learn the Torah in an experiential way, and the way we do it is through the Hasidus that we learn, isn't it? Yes, yes. With Hasidus, it makes it much, much easier to have the vision and the experience. Yes, to have it more like prophecy. That's why it says, Sheikh comes, well, everybody will be prophets. But in order to have this view of, of Mashiach and this prophecy level, we have to learn Hasidus because Hasidus is the, is the soul of Torah. And it opens up our eyes to have that experience more, to understand it more, not just in our intellect, but be able to actually visualize it and experience it more. But it is a gift. It's a gift. It says this level of prophecy is more of a gift. It's not something you can reach through breaking your head, okay, and trying to understand and induce with your rational mind. It's really more of a gift after serving Hashem. It's more, the experience comes more when you're actually fully vested with your soul into this connection. It's bringing Hashem into the picture, not just learning it as intellectual pursuit. So it's not like, if, if you want to really experience Hashem, you have to be fully, solely into the whole learning, not just intellectually pursuing some interesting information. It's a, it's, it's a dynamic of a relationship. Okay, so let's see, right? Let's see. Okay, so there's the laws of Torah, and then there's the reasons, the Tamei Torah, the, the inner dimension, the deeper dimension, that are beyond rationale and understanding. The, the, the deeper meaning of the mitzvahs is not something that we are able to necessarily get just from learning rational um, external parts of Torah of, uh, that we're used to learning. In order to get to really get fully the depths of the reasons and the, the, the inner meaning of Torah, we have to have an inner connection and that's like she was saying, through learning Hasidus, it reveals the soul of Torah, and our soul is awakened, and our soul is invested, and we get the soul connection between us and Hashem, we can have more of a, a connection to the deeper meanings of the teachings. Even the mitzvahs that we have some reason that's explained to us for the mitzvah, um, it's not fully, fully, fully everything. It's not the full, full, full gamut of the reason and the explanation and the meaning and the depths of, of the mitzvah. Even though we have some something revealed, it's not everything. In this mitzvah, or the reasons of the mitzvah, is enclosed, it's hidden, like there's encapsulated, a, a, a very, very deep, deep secrets of chokhmah, of wisdom that are beyond our rationale, beyond our our mind being able to perceive and understand. And also all the words 
of that came from Hashem's mouth, so to speak, that were given to the prophets, that are written in the Tanakh, whether there were words of rebuke or whether there were words of stories given, there in them is encoded deeper, deeper meanings and deeper chokhmah, wisdom of godliness, mamish godliness is beyond rationale, beyond understanding, beyond our comprehension that we can uh, go to with our, our rational mind. And, uh, you know, intellectual, physical brain is is limited. And the deeper meanings are unlimited. It's uh, it's ain't self, it's, uh, it's unlimited godliness. So it's very interesting because, okay, so because he's talking about sometimes in the Torah, a word is written one way and we read it another way. Okay, and that's, and the question is why? Like, why would it, like it's written with a yud and, and we read it like with a vav or Okay, so there's a few places in Torah. Why? Why would that be the case? So, okay. Um, now, I guess, Ray, you're interested in this because you're a calligrapher and you're writing letters, right? I'm interested because my husband's a cipher. Okay, so what's what's this, the deeper reason for this? Because there's certain letters that are... Be, um, Okay, it says like this. The, the way we read it is according to how we understand it. That's revealed to us. And the ksiv, uh, um, uh, one of, I'm not sure which one is the kri, which one is the ksiv. One is the way, we, yeah. Kri is the way we read it. It's according to how we understand. Ksiv, the way it's written, is actually beyond our rational and our understanding. And uh, the, the way that letters being written doesn't have really um, something that can actually include this awareness in, in the way it's written um, that we can the two don't 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 go together so how we read it is not how it's written okay it's a different enclosement there's something deeper in there that we can't really it, it doesn't go together the way it's written and the way it's 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 a, it's understood or read so 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 too it is with the letters, the big letters, you know, in the Torah also. There's some letters like the Shema, the Ayin is bigger, and the uh, Chad, the Dalit is bigger. So there's bigger letters in the Tanakh, Shema, Alm, and the Ilad. They're from a higher world, a higher level of revelation. Umeyot, Misham, Gilui, Blilavush, from there is revealed a revelation without an enclosement like the rest of the letters. So it's, it's a higher level of revelation in those letters than in the other letters. Okay, we may have, okay so that's it for today which is interesting because I remember, you know, my husband's writing this, he came to the Shema part, you know, we gave it to, to somebody to fill in that letter, to get part of filling in that letter. And I was like, oh, he's going to get, like, he's going to, I I figured he'll be really, really excited that he gets to write in the big eye or the big dollar. <laughs> I don't know if he did or didn't, it didn't seem like it, like he, um, like he was aware that it was something, and maybe he was and he didn't express it and he didn't. I have no idea, but I was like, I remember getting excited. My husband came to the letter, the big Aina, the big Dalit, because there's some, it, it's a written bigger, there's something there encoded in it that we don't know, some sort of revelation. Now, when Mashiach comes, all these encoded things will be clear and understood, and on all levels, not just intellectual, experiential, will be on this level of prophecy. So that's going to be something to okay. look forward to. Amen, amen, Chaim, Chaim. You want to uh, visualize this, Ray? Do you want to do a visualization? Um, I'm not sure about this one, except just now. Maybe it's a uh, time to meditate on on the light, not on the understanding. That, mm. Was that the essence of what today was? On the, yeah, on the, um, right, that there's deeper, deeper revelations of awarenesses that can't necessarily be understood in our rational. There's deeper meanings and reasons for everything that's going on, especially the mitzvahs, that we just, with our rational brain, we can't really, we have to un, 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 un it will be revealed and, and 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 revealed revealed and experienced when we're on a higher level of of connection to Hashem. That it won't be 
by pursuing our brain so much, pushing our brain to its limits, so it'll be more of a, a neshama level, a soul level of connecting to, be able to connect to higher vision. Uh, maybe I'll talk when you hike, hike up a beautiful mountain, see a waterfall, and you could paint it, or you could write it, write about it, describe it, or you could just experience the awe of it. Yeah. That what we're talking about here, so it's about... Um, um, it, is it telling us that we're supposed to more work with the intellect now? No, or no, no. That's exactly what, what, it's, what, it's, what it's saying. With the intellect, you can actually learn about many, many wonderful things and very high levels on the levels of Kabbalah and, and you know, worlds and this and that. But it, we won't necessarily have that vision because... The vision is more of an experience. It's more of a sight. It's more of a, it's more of a deeper awareness and connection. And it's so, so which way is the altar ever taking us here that we should, that we should stay with the with the intellectual or no no <laughs> I don't think the experience. There was no I, right here. There was no instruction of what we should do or shouldn't do. He was just just explaining the difference of there's different levels of 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 understandings. So, so what I'm adding, what I'll add, because it's not going to the therefore, I'll, I'll give a little therefore based on what the Rebbe teaches in 1991, 1992, where he explains even, takes us even further to our generation. He says, in our generation, we do need to learn as much Hasidus, which is the inner dimension of Torah, because that is the revelation of the inner hidden secrets of Torah. And when we connect to that, it opens up our ability to be able to have the vision. Them. Okay. Yeah, and in the future, everybody will be learning Hasidus, and everybody will have more of a, a deeper vision. It says everybody will be prophesizing, young and old. That will be with the teachings of Hasidus. So, that, so the fact that the Rebbe says, learn Hasidus, that reveal the inner dimensions of Torah, the Baal Shem Tov started that campaign. And that is really what's, what Geula is about. Mashiach is about us having visions and understanding on a higher, deeper connection level, not just intellectual. But it takes a, a, a it takes Hasidus to open up our awarenesses to that. And Mashiach is going to be able to reveal the deepest teachings because he, he is a prophet, it says. The Rebbe says Mashiach is, a, I mean, the Rebbe quotes that Mashiach is a prophet and he'll be able to teach Torah on a level that a prophet can see, like with these visions. And, but then he'll explain it to us, the Rebbe says it's pressure shifting, in a way that our brain will understand it and be able to interpret it to our mind. But Mashiach will have these revelations, as Moshe Rabbeinu did it even more, deeper reasons of Torah, and then teach it to us, and then we'll be able to slowly, slowly, that's why it says we'll go, at times of Mashiach will still be learning, going from high, level to level, because in holiness, there's le it's, it's, you know, God is unlimited, and there's unlimited levels of ascent of the soul, coming to more and more awarenesses. We'll be in the aha moments all the time. We'll be in what? Aha. The aha moment, like you don't get your aha. Well, ha, now I get it. But the even more than state of aha. a state of aha, of that wow, of that vision, of that getting it, but even more. Okay. Get Baltic, and then also not just that, but even really visualize it and experience it and yeah. So that's that's coming. That's happening and coming. It's unfolding in front of us. We're ex you know yeah. we're getting more and more of it, especially when we learn the teachings of the Rebbe. I think that's what the what the Nigunim do also. You learn, and then you the way it and you, you have to. Like, it helps open up the soul. Yeah. The Nigun helps op open yes. up to higher level. Yes. Of receptivity. Yeah. Yes. Yes. All right. Thank you. Uh, you want to do a little meditation? Or yes, yes, yes. I love your meditation, sorry. All right. So let's just tap into that. Let's try to tap into that. Mm -hmm. Breath. Mm -hmm. Let it out in a big sigh. Big sigh of teshuva. Instant teshuva. And as you breathe in, breathe that breath of life directly from Hashem, breathing it into you with a hug and a kiss, filling you with love and strength, 
breathe out anything that does not feel like love or strength. Another breath in. Experience with that breath, that, that expression of the ultimate kindness of Hashem, breathing the breath of life into us, full of his infinite forgiveness. Breathe out anything that feels less than whole. Breathe it out and let it go. Another breath in. Visualize Hashem breathing, placing a part of himself into your soul and breathing it deep from his deepest place to your deepest innermost self. His infinite compassion placing himself inside of you with infinite strength, compassion, and love and trust that you will continue to make the effort to bring light to your place, through your talents, your passions, through your efforts. Breathe out anything that feels like an obstacle to that infinite potential. As you breathe in, just fill yourself, feel yourself being filled with Hashem's light, filling you, surrounding you, with that light of other dimension beyond what we see all the confusing and scary things of this world, that incredible world of light. Shem's pure love. Experience it. Fill yourself with it. Surround yourself with it. And as you breathe out, fill the rest of the world with it. It's infinite. Take all of that light, Shem's infinite love and compassion, forgiveness, take it with you into your day and spread it wherever you go. Okay. Yay. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. I was visualizing Hashem's infinite light in the actual physical food and dishes that we're going to be um, <laughs> serving. <laughs> yeah, when, you're, when, our, when our guests come and say, uh, what are we having? We can say, oh, we're, we're serving up infinite light. Yes, exactly. And it will be in beautiful dishes and beautiful food, delicious food. <laughs> Dipping that apple in golden light. Yes. And golden honey. It's all a revelation manifestation of God's light. Good. Such a big, good, sweet year. And you just thank you for joining. Is there anybody else here that came? Oh, uh, and she dropped off a while ago. Yes, good. So I'm glad we recorded it. And uh, so in two months, I guess, we'll do our next, hopefully. I, yeah. I, I plan to be in your Shalayim. So we'll see. I'll have to coordinate. <laughs> Thank you. All righty. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.